Welcome to EcoS Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be talking about system integrator evolution. And to help us walk through this topic, we have Mr. Bobby Cole, who is the founder and president of Think PLC. So welcome, Bobby. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Good to be here. I'm excited to have you, man. This is a topic we haven't uh, explored on EcoS Why, so I'm very excited to walk through it with you. You got a lot of cool things going at Think PLC, uh, and we'll make sure that we put all the the contact information for you in our show notes, because if you're not following Think PLC, Bobby does some really cool things out there that is uh, pushing the limits. And we talked about digital marketing and things like that, just getting ready for this. So, man, I'm excited, Bobby. And and we have some listeners who may not be familiar with, with what a system integrator does. So can you maybe just get us up to speed on what that is that, that you do? Sure. Um, and, and it, does come up every every often it's so close to um, what we do and we don't think about it that much but a, a systems integrator is a company that specializes in bringing together components and or subsystems into one cohesive project machine or some kind of operation mm-hmm. um, in my world which is industrial automation we purchase commercially available products from folks like you uh, thank you so much and we take those products to create new or replace existing systems that otherwise are not off the shelf. Okay. I got you. I got you. So, I mean, uh, you're using, like you said, the, the all sorts of different manufacturers and, and components to build a solution for end user. We do. We, we combine multiple manufacturers into that cohesive system. Okay. Yeah. Because not always do all fit for everything, right? Right, right. You know, some are trying. <laughs> that's right. You know, and sometimes I've some in the past I've heard like system integrators, panel builders. Yeah. How would you differentiate that? Is that are they the same in your mind, or are they they no, different? Not. Yeah. Um, some systems integrators are panel builders, and there's panel builders that that can do some integration. So there there's a blended line there. Gotcha. And and you know it's uh, and we have kept our panel shop. Uh, we are a panel builder, systems integrator, just like you mentioned. That's a great question. Um, and we've kept it busy um, by supporting other integrators, okay. uh, being a partner in building panels. And we often sell ourselves as, you know, not one and all. Um, we try to be flexible and easy to do business with. Yeah. And with that, that means that we will do the CAD design when you have your own programmers. We'll build the panels and you can do everything else. We, we don't care. Uh, right. We don't have to own the whole project. I got you. Okay. Well, well, thanks for clarifying that. And, you know, how about when you look at the way the, the, the game is changing for system integrators, are there any really prevalent changes that are, are that are taking place that you, that you're seeing? Yeah. Um, relationships okay. um, is, is a big one for me, which is kind of just close to heart here. Um, how engagement is getting done. Uh-huh. It's, it, This business is very much through word of mouth and handoff through partner-based supportive businesses, like I mentioned. Uh, For example, we we do a lot with mechanical companies, and we will partner, which we introduce each other. Either they need mechanical help, my customers, or a mechanical company's um, or electrical contractor, we'll call them, need integration services or programming, panel build, whatever. So it's it's a lot of of relationship-based business these days. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That, that's that been a, uh, sounds like a significant shift in the way, the way the business is done. Yeah, it, it is. And um, it, it's just the way it's managed um, through the, you know, internet's changed things, right? Yeah. Starting with the internet and now um, with COVID right. um, it's, it's changed this past year, probably the most it has in the last 10, 15 years. Well, I mean, and speaking of COVID, I mean, how has that impacted the way you guys interact and, and work with clients? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Remote connectivity. I mean, we have to be apart from each other. Um, we've had to beef up how we remote connect the system so we can um, respond, number one, and that, that ultimately um, we can engage with our customers at, at some level, right? So. Right. With that, it's been very difficult. Face-to-face is what is traditional, what is comfortable for me. Um, I often feel like through remote means, explanations of what is being communicated can be misconstrued. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not easy to just 
pull the drawings up. Uh, you know, you have kids yelling and dogs barking in the background and lots happening now with these virtual calls, which is which is good. Um, and, and I often like to use a career long example library, you know, pieces, parts and, and demonstrate through communication um, how we're going to win this business and, and give the customer that that comfort and confidence. Right. That not only um, we're going to succeed technically, but we're the company that will just complete the job. Um, we, you know, we, we come, uh, we come amongst people that have highly technical folks, but, uh, completing stuff is kind of seems to be a issue for, them. um, so educating our customers in virtual visualization, uh, that we're delivering has been different and making sure virtual meetings are prepared, uh, we're to the point and have minimal operational issues. Yeah. Yeah. How has that been for you? I mean, we did a whole uh, podcast you may find helpful on uh, communicating virtually. And there are a lot of little nuances to make that flow, right? Absolutely. Um, being prepared. Um, yeah. Nothing more than uh, death by meetings. There's there's some great books out there. There's a book called Death by Meetings. I, I rushed to, to read this book in the last eight months uh, when a peer of mine actually shared it with me. Uh, and I demonstrated, I, I, you know, we're, time got wasted. We're sitting at home and we felt like we had to have virtual meetings every hour. I, it was like back to back to back <laughs> meetings because right. um, we all felt like we were missing something because the opportunity to show up and just talk was not available. Right, right. That shifted things, no doubt. Absolutely. So, well, I mean, it sounds like you're doing a great job and you, you, you're you mastering that virtual communication, with some, which is important. And, and I know... You you work with a lot of OEMs, you know, as you as you, as your business has grown, and that's and, what's different about us. And a lot of uh, fact, and and while we we blend the line of what we call a systems integrator, right. it's because we we are very OEM focused. Right, right. So I mean, as you as with that OEM focus, you know, how are you trying to inspire vision with those OEMs? It's because I mean, you know, technology is changing, man. I mean, you're you're seeing it. You're in front of it. I, I, I definitely follow Think PLC, and I see all. This, you're definitely a, a innovator. So, just curious, how you take that innovation and inspire vision with the OEMs that you're working with? Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, yeah, traditionally, machine or system OEMs were all inclusive, uh-huh. which which means they did everything. They had the electrical, mechanical, sales, everything uh, for good or bad. Uh, we'll leave it there, right? Because it's like being everything to everybody is complicated. Um, where we fit real well, we're focused and they're going, the guys who are innovating, they have that reach. We are, we're, that's our business. So if, if they bolt us in, we'll call us a bolt-in business to their business as a contractor, they're getting the best of the best. So, um, yeah, so fully staffed for realm of the whole machine used to be a thing. It's not anymore. Um, through a handful of things from the late nineties, the boom of the IT professionals and in lieu of manufacturing engineers in global competition, we just saw a lot of OEMs go away for a bit. Uh And we saw the traditional controls engineer or maintenance technician start to, I think, deplete and, and has created a harder time for an OEM to, to keep people on staff that, that want to be that want to be energized and, and keeping them entertained with new technologies. Um, so what they do is they, they don't try to keep those folks anymore. Uh, they allow us to act as their controls arm um, or as a partner. And it's win-win for everybody. I mean, it really is. And we bring a depth of newer product knowledge. We can act faster and often have more of added support that mechanical only teams wouldn't have otherwise. So, I mean, that's really like a completely outsource, but you're, you're really ingrained and you understand the process, what the, what the end user is trying to accomplish and you're helping them get there. Yeah, it, it comes with trust. Um, I mean, it, it really does. I, I come back to the Krispy Kreme business that, that, that we do and we've supported. I've, I've been engaged with those guys for 12 years now. Um, first, you know, life cycles of products, going back to your question, they were, you know, um, they're using and how to ease the pain of traveling the world and, and retrofitting old equipment because this stuff is going to go away. There is a, there is a life to a product. And then eventually um, through innovation, manufacturers are going to come out with something to replace it with. They don't make 
you know, um, the, the same product over and over again. We see the automobile industry, obviously, they're innovating every four years, new model, right? right. Well, we're seeing that with, uh, with the products you sell, actually, drives and PLCs and things like that. So um, for us, it's finding the quick cost effective solution that solves the problem. You know, it's, it's one thing to just make something work, but it's another to do that at a reasonable price. Yeah. Exactly. But to do that and make it better, you know, it's not often what my customers have experienced. So being that person for them is all around satisfying yeah. to me. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you, you spoke about Krispy Kreme. I know you support a lot of different customers. I mean, do you have examples that stand out where, where you can look back and you say how you really help them see possibilities and maybe get them past some of the, the technology that is fading, you know, or, or aging away? Um, yeah. So I've got to say something about Krispy Kreme. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're a great customer, but they holistically have full control. And it's kind of interesting. Someone that does such a good job with a food product, be such a good machine builder right. internally. Um you know, and, and we're probably one of the very few things controls wise that they do trust to outsource. I mean, they, they literally build every piece of their own equipment. They have welders that work there over 40 years. Um, it, it's quite incredible. But with that being said, um, you know, we went to the IoT platform with those guys. What, what first come up was, um, as we talked about before we got on the podcast, I wanted to have a vacation every now and then. When you support such a large company globally, I found at one point in my career that was getting hard to do because I was the guy or my team was was that person and I was engaged quite a bit. And so leaving them, I you know, I felt bad to even take a day off and they may need me. So um, what we did is we, we worked with the engineering and equipment guys to, to help improve the remoteness so that we were not sending thousands of dollars worth of product to just throw parts at a machine, right. we could actually do remote connectivity for service. And so what it did is sped it up in, in 10 minutes, I'm online figuring out potentially what the issue is so that the folks, the boots on the ground could get it fixed quicker. Uh, in the past, we would say, you know, send us pictures. We would just take a guess. And, you know, these are, these are people making a product to dispense to the public. They're not machine folks actually at the end account. Um, so that was complicated. So we went to a IOT device. Okay. And I can, you know, through a very encrypted secure connection, I can connect to the machine anywhere I can get a Wi-Fi connection and help them out. And then we found uh, from an innovative standpoint, we can take the data that, that we're seeing, which is PLC code uh, right. in the form of tags and, and, and values of the machine. And we can pump it to the cloud like this podcast, right? You'd mentioned, yep. and we can shove that data up in the cloud and create a dashboard so they can see a, what's going on with their equipment anywhere in the world. Okay. So for any of the machines that are connected, they can actually see performance metrics. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We have what we call KPIs and we have full dashboards. We can go back and trend uh, all the alarm messages over the last six months uh, one particular was here close by North Carolina. Um, I was doing a demonstration class for the folks in Australia for Krispy Kreme, and I, I pulled it up live. I'm, you know, we might as well train on a live machine. So I did one locally here early on, and I said, you know what, guys, the, the shortening pump, I'm getting a lot of uh, circuit breaker trips in here. And, and I hung up. I did my thing. I kind of set to the side, didn't make a point of it. And I called the service manager, Eamon Griffin, who's great. And I said, you know, next time you guys are over in Clemens, you might want to take another shortening pump over there. There's something going on. Right. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, he said, I'm so glad you told, you know, Ricky put it on his truck. And that's, a, they've been having problems, you know. Wow. So, yeah, big deal. That's awesome, man. So how long has that, that IoT solution, have you been doing that with them? Yeah, um, probably four years. So if you think back about it, um, and, and again, I, I say innovative because, it was just a new, it wasn't brand new, but people right. actually implementing it four years is a long time ago for, from an IOT standpoint. It's, it's, you know, early 2020, it was the buzzword for yeah. sure. Yeah. Internet of things, industry 4.0, we all heard it. Nobody knew what it really meant. You know, there's manufacturers like Siemens had MindSphere out for, for at least four years 
And when it came out, people were like, this is really neat stuff. I don't know what to do with it. Right. You know, right. so we, we need to see someone innovate with this so we understand how we can apply it to our business. And going back to the early topic about communicating with customers, I can do that now. I can say, well, you know, um, am I the right choice for you? Well, I've got 600 machines connected to the cloud that I can pull up on my phone and show you right now. Is that good enough? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. a big deal. No kidding, man. And I mean, so I, mean, I am curious on your the platform and what and your KPIs. Did you build that back that front end for for them to work with as well is that or is yeah. that like a, a third part oh so you you guys enter, engineered that yes holistically oh yeah. wow man that is that's awesome yeah and there's some um, there's some neat things it's going past uh, one solution fits all and that was uh you know rockwell has their products out now that are cloud connecting in the the mind sphere i mentioned from siemens it's a really neat concept where um, they know best to connect to their products, I would say. Um, and with that, you're paying for time on the pot for those guys and what it's called for, or, or data to the cloud. And right. then the neat thing Siemens did is they made it where any, anyone who can develop an app can put it on MindSphere. And then if that app solves a solution for any of the customers looking at that product, they can actually purchase that app like an app in the app store right. is, the, is the general concept that I've taken from it. Um, but in our in our uh, Krispy Kreme engagement, it was more so we wanted to have full control, full focus, right. and make sure you know when they wanted a new user added or anything, we could do that quickly for them. Yeah, I mean, and it probably saved them some expense too, and it gets it done faster. You don't have to Major. send. Some, yeah, I mean, you don't have to like put anybody on an airplane. Yes, and, and I mean, uh, I, I go back to one of the first ones. Um, was out in Honolulu, right? So the guy, I'm on the phone with this uh, gentleman in Honolulu trying to fix a machine. And it was actually when the missile scare came in a few years ago. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's expensive to plane hop UPS parts right. it, uh, from island to island. And, you know, these, these things, uh, we have stores in Korea, Russia, um, everywhere you can think of, you know, Middle East, we have stores. And we're sitting here in little old welcome, North Carolina. We got to figure out a way to support these guys, right? Right, right. Yeah, no kidding, man. And, and you you mentioned 2020. Uh, that definitely became a buzzword, remote connectivity. Yeah. So I was expecting you to say we started this year, but you were four years into this or three years into this when, yep. when that hit. Yes. Yep. Man, that's that's amazing. I, I, I love that story. And, and thank you for, for breaking it out for us because that's, I mean, for me, you're you're right. It's all about the buzzwords, but you're taking the, the the data and actually making impactful business decisions to help them run better. Yeah, it was a, it was an ancillary thing. It really was. My focus was service. Um, right. You know, I, I I was I had a little tunnel vision at first, in, in which which was a big thing, right? So again, let's not put ten thousand dollars in parts in a box ship them, right. you know, uh, we did Delta dash, picked it up, took it to the store and you need a $60 part out of that box. Cause we just had no clue. And, and you didn't want to send, you know, parts, but the one thing you needed not be in that box, right. uh, by being able to connect now and, and, and through the, uh, the job with the programming and I got to give it up to some of the engineers. I didn't develop all of it. Um, the extensive diagnostics that we implemented on the machines, that was another thing, but to be able to get that data out where we can connect and see it's been a yeah. been huge. Yeah, no doubt, man. Well, hats off to you because you're actually making the buzzwords up. Uh, you're putting them in action. <laughs> I've been, uh, so interesting enough, I had a CEO early in the year. He said, look, uh, you know, this is a $200 plus million company. He said, our board has said we're going IoT in the next two years. That's our business. Right. It's going to be what we're doing. We got to figure out how he goes. I don't even know what it is. Could, could, could I, you know, engage with you to come speak to us about what this is. Yeah. And so it's kind of been interesting to be a, a champion of it thus yeah. far. No doubt, man. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Well, thank you again for sharing all that information and, you know, we'll, we're going to keep moving here because I yeah. know there's some things you want to talk about, about evolution, things that are working. But before we get there, yeah. when you think through a system integrator and what people's perception is, is there anything you like to debunk? Like you may think we do this, but no, that's not the case. No, I don't think I'm your guy to debunk myths. 
<laughs> no, I'd probably agree with them. I mean, be honest with you. Um, I try to, I'm a little probably uh, too honest in that, that sense. And, and that was the great thing about Think PLC is let's get in a room and, and let's talk about all the myths and let's talk about what we're not going to be yeah. and, and to get to who we're going to be. Um, you know, the traditions of high hourly rates for subpar knowledge, burning billable hours, no flexibility when issues arise, all the things that I have to prove that I'm not. Right. You know, to every new account, you know, the people that know me, they know me. But um, every new account that I engage with with our company, um, I'm having to prove that's not what we are. You know, and let's face it, uh, what we do can be hard. Long hours, last minute holidays, <laughs> I've already alluded to. Uh, nothing ever breaks on a schedule, you know, even though we talk about these pre- predictive analytics, uh, you know, in these machines that are coming, um, you know, and, and none of my customers will accept. Can we wait till Monday? You know, right. it just won't. So, I mean, that's it. I, that I, to answer your question. I, I'd say that that's kind of where I'm at with it. Gotcha. Understood. Well, Bobby, thanks for sharing some of that. I, I think you really, you, you helped us understand better some of what the system integrators face. You know, and I know when we were prepping for this together, you had a lot of cool ideas that I just, I, I wasn't in, anticipating, you know, and you, think, you started talking about, you know, engaging with content experts to, to help develop your people. So can you share with us what you're, what you're doing there? Yeah, for me, uh, I've quit trying to be the best content expert in engineering, the best engineer uh, myself and our understanding that I'm a student of leadership um, and I'm working on being a better leader, which I've not done in the past. I've always ran out to be the, the, you know, the best Alan Bradley programmer or the best Siemens dynamic servo guy or whatever it was. And, and I really shifted gears and think PLC and said, I'm, I'm going to, I need to learn to yeah. be a better leader and, and to take this business forward. Cause that's what, that's what my customers are asking for. Mm-hmm. So, and, and my thoughts are, you know, management should not be the only ones with leadership focus, but every single person in the organization, and you don't hear that talked about very much. Right. Right. And um, we don't hold professional development you know, at Think PLC for just our management team anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, We include everyone uh, and we've promoted an entrepreneurial spirit through being servants to each other and everyone. And we talk about it often. Uh, You know, everyone can speak up. Everyone has a voice here uh, and it matters. It truly does. And as for content experts, like you mentioned, um, we've been inviting business engagement speakers, technically or business to everybody that works here, not just our management team. Um, and we do uh, internal development as well. Uh, to start off the new year this year, 2021, uh, we had Richard Consoli, uh, who is the president of J.A. King and been a friend of mine for a long time. He came in and discussed his 35 years of experience and he, and he made a note in his presentation and sometimes the hard way. Uh-huh. You know, he's, he's owned an integration company and he knows what it means to be an entrepreneurial team member, which is an interesting concept, right? Yeah. And, you know, the topics we talked about were ethics and and being entrepreneurial, but being a team member, uh, you know, personal goals for our our folks, uh, just to name a few of them. But, um, you know, the big one is, is does your camp, does your company care about your growth, really, you know, personal and professionally? And and do they do you plan? You know, um, we we joke that we don't do employer reviews. We actually do mentorship. Uh, for growth. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, Bobby. I mean, it, so for our listeners, it, think PLC, how, how, how many people, how long have you been in business? We've only been in business about two years now okay. and we're a little over 20 people. Wow. That's awesome. Yep. That is great. I mean, and to, that you have the foresight and the wisdom to, to want to pour that into your employees. That says so much, man, that that's great, great leadership. I appreciate it. I mean, and it's, it's proven, you know, you, you do things, you make decisions like all owners and business managers and everyone does. And you, you want to see them come to fruition. Um, I'm, I'm careful to not make a decision and not shift gears too soon. Uh, I've, I've learned my lesson that in the past. And I mean, the, the meat of it's in the numbers. Uh, we did three times the revenue expected last year in, in the worst economy ever, really. So, um, so that, that proved itself in, you know, itself. And, and I have been a part of a business like this before, 
And this year, our EBITDA, which is what matters in, from a business standpoint, right. was as much as it was before with double the revenue. Man, so, man, that and, ought to and be, that's, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's great, man. Congratulations. <laughs> yep. And, and, you know, we've been able to, um, um, tuition's been a big thing, keeping our folks happy. Right. Um, cause this is a, it's an interesting life. It's yeah. constant changing and, um, it, it's different than being the guy in the plant. It really right. is. Right. Right. No doubt. Yeah, and I know one thing that that really threw me off when we, when we were prepping together. You you brought up the, the topic of digital marketing, and yep. I was not expecting that from from you know, system integrator to talk about how the digital marketing is impacting. But man, what what's going on there? Well, you know, LinkedIn is back. Um, years ago, I stopped getting on LinkedIn because honestly, it was nothing but. Um, uh, folks offering me jobs, uh, recruiters. It was it was a place for recruiters, and that was, it. that was it. And although I still think it's fine for people to recruit folks on there, but it become a place just for recruiters. Mm-hmm. Folks in our industry are going back to places like LinkedIn to get their information. Yeah. Uh, instead of you know, it, it, let's face it, nobody wants any more emails than you have to get an answer in a day. So the old days of getting newsletters and emails that you never looked at because you didn't have time. Well, they got so used, I think, to scrolling through their Facebook wall and, you know, and, and that just become a part of their life. But instead of seeing your uncle's political views, you can jump over to LinkedIn and see some cool stuff you're into, you know, in your yeah. career and, you know, maybe find that new job or find that new employee. And so it, it kind of kicked back off a year or so ago. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, you talked about digital marketing. We are. We actually um, I've engaged more so than I would in the past. We actually have a digital marketing expert full time that works here, uh, which is kind of interesting, you know, and I, I've made jokes that today's a 60 year old sales guys, you know, coming by to bring you brochures or over that, you know, I think anyway. Yeah. Um, well, maybe not, you know, and that's, uh, you know, should they're, be careful over. With that. <laughs> they're over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you can't engage with folks like that. Right. With COVID, it's changed. Yep. Um, and it's the expectation. But, you know. Even if it is, that's not the way we're going to do business. That's just a plan I laid out for us, I think. And, you know, being about 98% of our business is what we call defensive, where there's a problem and, you know, it's it's already identified. Usually money is already allocated for a project. Um, you know, it, it's more engineering level to identify the budget and the solution if we're doing anything from a sales perspective. Right. And so we're on the defense. And again, I'm, I appreciate more of a relationship business. Yeah. You know, put it all out there. Let people know who we are. You know, don't, don't go to your building and hide, you know, let's, let's put it out there and let's, I think we're doing some great stuff. Let's talk about it. I mean, I, I just saw recently you guys did a poll and then you have, you've had a couple of things where you, you're getting people to engage with you. Yeah. Uh, like, I, th- I forget your think automation or something like that. You had to say yeah. to get into that, that raffle for some swag, but right. it's it's just really cool, man. I mean, I don't see other integrators or, or very many people at all doing that level. Yeah. Why not? Let's, let's have an open conversation. That's what I've been about since day one. Yeah. Um, you know, I can make some fancy brochures and talk about how we're, you know, doing robot projects, but let's, let's, let's show that off. You know, let's, let's, show pictures of the control panels. And, you know, I, I, honestly, I love it when people say, wow, that looks great. But I, I get negative comments too. I get, I get people asking, they're, they're saying, Hey, that's too close together. Or, right. or, you know, I would do it a different way. I, we're having a conversation. That's right. I like it. We're that's learning. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, post COVID that's, that's where we're going to be at. Um, you know, leading up to that, I, I started a uh, local group, um, through North Carolina and East Tennessee called Beers and PLCs. Um, we called it Brew Logic. And, and we would go out and just invite folks and we'd go to a local brewery. Um, I'm clicking off one of my hobbies and I'm getting somebody to pay for it. And then I'm engaging with people. And, and what was cool is we get those groups, uh, 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 folks together, uh, my company, my community and all that good stuff. And, and, you know, with COVID, we can't do that. So let's go to LinkedIn and just have those conversations like yeah. we would otherwise. So, I mean, that, is that group still like an active group on LinkedIn? You know, we didn't take it to a LinkedIn group. Okay. Um, I left that for us just to just to kind of engage. 
Uh, but but soon as we get this vaccine out and, and we can all get in, it, it's a personable thing. I'm with you. It's about getting in a room. It's, it's about, and, and what I said is, um, I, I did not want a sales or a sales engineer. I wanted someone to show an app, you know, bring your products. Don't get me wrong, but let's bring somebody that's actually integrated it and let's show it off, show how you did it, what was neat about it. Yeah. You know, let's, let's make this a learning event and a social event. We had folks finding jobs, finding employees, finding new suppliers or suppliers, finding customers they otherwise didn't have. Man, that is so cool, Bobby. That's awesome, man. So it's great, great for you. And uh, we'll make sure, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the show, follow Bobby, follow Think PLC. Uh, they're doing some wonderful things with digital marketing. So uh, I really enjoyed that that part of the conversation, Bobby. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, appreciate it. Absolutely, man. So we, we wrap up the Eco Ask Why with the why. And we, we get to this at, on every episode. It's the heart of the show. So, you know, if you're thinking through a system integrators and how they're uh, serving in the future, you know, why should they start evaluating how they serve their clients and try and really work towards being those change agents for all this cool technology that's coming to industry? Bottom line, the world is changing. You know, if, if you and your team in its entirety are not customer centric, uh, my opinion is you're going to fail. Um, or you're going to have a tough road, right? And not if, but when. And so, you know, that culture must be part of the development and cadence and communication to everybody that works here and in companies like what we're doing, I think. Yeah. Um, if not, everyone does not understand that the customers who are, who, you know, pays the bills, who pays our paycheck. Um, if, if you don't understand that, then you're, you're destined for a hard way and, you know, trust me, I've been there. Um, you know, arrogance and that sort of thinking is a cancer, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. it, it it's why we talk so much about character here at Think PLC. And, and, you know, I said it, character, not culture, right? And um, everyone talks about culture they supposedly have, you know, in their businesses. But if you're individually asked their employees, what does that mean? You'd probably get an answer in a multiple of how many employees I actually have. I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I often open up all my company meetings with an image of an iceberg graphic that shows 80% of the iceberg underwater and underneath it says character. And then the small portion sticking out of the water says skills, you know, right. and, and I, we constantly remind ourselves of that here. And if you ask any of the Think PLC associates, they would say it's the 80% of the character. Yeah. That yeah. keeps the sink from, you know, that, that will sink the shit. You know, it's, it's about character. Yeah. So, and, and then I think that builds the culture, right? Don't right. force it. That's right. That's right. Well, Bobby, that was wonderful. I mean, I, people can obviously tell your character, the, the way that you, that you would treat your employees, the, the focus on uh, customers and, and, and trying to get them to be better. So, man, this has been so much fun. You really unpack the whole system integrator evolution topic, man. That was wonderful. So thank you so much. <laughs> a tough one yeah i appreciate it <laughs> you're you're a great guest and, and, and i again thank you for taking the time with us on eco ask why my pleasure i love this podcast all right thank you sir thank you for listening to eco ask why this show is supported ad free by electrical equipment company eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.